All right, guys, now we're going to do a little map work. The work we're going to do is on a USGS map that I downloaded right off their website for free. Had to go to my local printer, though, and pay to have it printed. You can also buy it directly from the USGS website, order it through the mail online. This particular quadrangle that we're working with is from Lumber City, seven and a half minutes series. What we're going to talk about next on this map is the marginal information. The marginal information on a map is extremely important because it really dictates everything on the map that you need to know as you're plotting grids, traveling, navigating, or using the map in that fashion. If you notice on the sides, you have your east-west lines designations. You have the same designation for your north-south grid lines on the top and the bottom of the map. All right, so let's look at the marginal information at the bottom of the map. All of this stuff is very important. We've actually blown this up so that you can see it and we can read it a little bit better and explain it. As you go down here, you'll see a lot of things that pertain to the map and that's very important to make sure you have the updated and most current map available because things change over time and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that as we move along. You can see the datums they use here. You can see this is a UTM map because it says it right here and that we're working in grid zone designation 17R. Also that tells you about the 10,000 foot tick marks that are on here additionally. There's also a lot of uh, date information down here that is uh, current to this map. You need to read that and again, make sure it suits your needs of what you're trying to accomplish at this time. As you come on around, you'll see the grid zone designation. This is the grid, the UTM grid that this map came out of. Also, if you come up a little bit more, you see the U.S. National Grid. This is the grid that it relates to on the U.S. National Grid. Something very important on this map, as well as military maps, the declination diagram. The declination diagram actually depicts in degrees for this map where it sits on the Earth, the difference between magnetic north and grid north that's actually on the map. Now this is very important. Magnetic north is not actually the North Pole. Magnetic North is at a little a location slightly off the North Pole and has moved over the last several years to a different destination. If you have a map that's 20 years old or so, they could have a different degrees on this map than this current map has. And we're going to talk more about that as well later. Now we're going to move to the center of the marginal information. We've blown that up for you as well. This also is extremely important in the navigation procedure on the map. For every inch depicted on this map, represents 24,000 inches on the ground. It has a scale in meters, it has a scale in miles, and it has a scale in feet. Contour interval is 10 feet. When we talk about contour lines, that will be very important to, and we'll go back and visit it again. Our map sits right here. Here are the names of the other adjoining maps. If you wanted to get the map from Jacksonville Northeast, number four, that's the one that you would order to join right up and would come right in on the side of this map here. Here are some of the road classifications on the map, although there are many, many other features on this map. And as you can see, it repeats itself down here as being a Lumber City, Georgia area map. It's gonna be handy if you go to Google, search this little ditty right here, because it has all the features that are located on the USGS topographical maps, and will break down each one for you. So when you see something on the map, you understand exactly what it is. Now we're going to talk about all these squiggly lines on the map and what they actually mean, how you can use them to your advantage when navigating. There's five primary colors on a map. Blue, green, red, brown, and black. And they all depict something. So for example, as we look around this map here, green, that depicts vegetation. Red, normally major roadways or highways. Black are man-made objects, for example, what looks like an airstrip over here. Brown is these contour lines that we're seeing right here. So let's talk about them just a little bit more. What is a contour line? What they do is depict elevation. You'll notice that they have the elevation written in the major contour lines, and then they have a division of con small intermediate contour lines in between them. On this map, the contour interval was 10 feet. So for every one of those small lines, you're actually going down or up 10 feet, depending on which way the elevation is traveling. We're going to talk about some major terrain features here real quick. A hill, a saddle, which is two hilltops with uh, a drop in between them, a valley, high ground on three sides with water normally coming running out of it. We've got a depression that we actually 
made ourselves up here because the map didn't have a depression on it, depicting elevation going straight down. Over here, we have a ridge. You'll see that these, it depicts elevation moving down in a certain direction from the hilltop. That's a ridge. There's also many, many more terrain features written in here on this current map that we can talk about at another time. All right, so we wanted to spend a little bit more time on the explanation of contour lines. I rolled out a clean map over here. Again, this is an exploded view of the UTM Georgia map that we were referencing earlier. As I stated in the beginning, contour lines depict elevation, but let's break that down a little bit and find out exactly how that happens. What you see here is a hilltop. This is an index line. You'll notice it's darker than the lines beside it. Those are intermediate contour lines. Normally, there are four intermediate contour lines between each index line. And you'll notice if you follow the dark index line, it will give you the elevation. So what you see here is 150 feet elevation. We have a 10 foot contour interval. So if you count the intermediate contour lines, 160 feet, 170 feet, 180 feet, 190 feet, 200 feet. We end up back at an index contour line, and you can see how that is indicated by the 200 feet. You'll have to follow these around the map sometimes and track down the index lines and find out what the exact elevation is. But that's how contour lines are laid out, and that's how they're used. Now that we understand contour interval, what does it do for us on the map? Well, let's look at the lines right here. You'll notice this is 200 feet and this is 150. And there's quite a long distance between each of the intermediate contour lines. That's a very slow slope. But let's look on the other side. See how the contour lines are stacked right on top of each other? That means off of this hill right here, this drops down very rapidly. Using those contour lines throughout the map, you'll see those slight slopes and those sharp slopes and those will help you navigate while using the map. <laughs>